Hello, my name is Kay Ulandai Barrett, and you are watching Poets House Presents. I'm going to be reading three poems from my book, my new collection, More Than Oregon's, published by Sibling Rivalry Press. It just came out in the pandemic, March 2020. And I hope you all are finding care, nourishment, chosen family, and uplifting black, trans, and disabled lives. First poem, while looking at photo albums. Before everyone died in my family, first definition I learned was my mother's maiden name, Ulandai, which literally means of the rain. And biology books reminds us that pouring has a pattern, has purpose. Namesake means release, and for my mother meant flee, meant leave. Know exactly what parts of you slip away, drain sediment of a body, is where a single mama feels on the graveyard shift. Only God is awake, is where my family banked itself. A life rooted in rosaries like nuns in a barricade scream, people power, one out of five, leave to a new country. The women in my family home, in my heart, like checkpoints, which is like a halt, not to be confused for stop, which is what happened to my mom's breath when she went home. For the last time, I didn't get to hold her hand as she died. I said I tried, just translates to, I couldn't make it in time. I tell myself, ocean salt and tear salt are one and the same. I, I press my eyes shut, cup, ghost howl, cheek splint, wood worn, which is to say, learn to make yourself a harbor? Mm, anyway, <sighs> once I saw this pamphlet, and the pamphlet said, what to do when your parents are dead? And I couldn't finish reading, but I doubt it informs the audience what will happen, which is to say, you will pour your face in hands and smother your mother's scream on everything you touch. Turn eyelids into oars. Go, paddle to find her. This next poem is entitled, How to Make Celibat. <laughs> Oi, listen, this is how to cut the ginger. It's a root. She said from Chicago basement on the first snow of the year, it's the 90s. Snow is a big deal. Tear salt missing ocean salt. She cleared her throat. Based on where we're from, nothing can prepare you for frozen. Fast forward. College friend asks, hey, 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 how do you make that drink again? That tea again, the one you used to drink when it started to snow? I want to say. My ma is dead. Uh, she made this every time it began to snow. I bury both my parents by age 25. Have you, have you called your mother? Have you checked to see if there's a tumor slowly living under her skin? What I recall most was her crying, which is a lot like any drink, really, a, a pouring. Which reminds me of something a friend once mentioned. If you only write about crying and death, nobody will buy your books. What I really do is listen to the same voicemail over and over where my mother's throat is miles away, mouthful of liquid steeped tea bags for lungs, just waiting for the right time to let what I actually want to say all the time is grief. Grief is the full-time job. What I say to my friend only mentions directions, which leads one to think about when my mother finally went back. Um, a visit, she coined it. Vacation, which was code word for, for good. Two weeks later, she says in calling cards staccato, I'm in bad shape, Anak, which is migrant 
code for death. Words have multiple meanings. My mama taught me that, in essence, she was my first poetry instructor. This is how a mother tongue is whittled, dull, abandoned building, once home. My mother, when mother dies, I couldn't say that. I couldn't say that phrase for years. Couldn't say, she's dead. How in three languages I don't have words for absence. A mouth becomes thud. English becomes harder to swallow. Did you know? that on the worst days, I forgot what her favorite song was. But the tiny eruption of her cough repeats in loop all the time now. This last poem, tell a child about something that causes you fear or dread with gratitude to Samya Bashir. It's okay to just be wounded sometimes, to gape, to cry, to rock, to shiver, to rumble, to ramshackle, to shiver, to shake ancestors in your sleep, to be part dead, to razor, to lash, to hammer, to hang, to be the thing that flails, to be cathedral, to be gravestone, to, to speak cobweb. Let me tell you, to die every day is the kind of pulse that makes music, to be the kid who leans against books more than people, to be the book as it opens and closes, folds in on itself on the same paragraph, to be underlined stanza, whose body bursts, syntax scars naked. Love body, when it emblazons family curse, when you are bad joke at the table, when you are shuffled scrapes of forks, the, rear, the weirdo told to shut up, forsaken. Let lonely make a lens so clear you become intergalactic. Let the residue be a blanket you shed every season. Let your gaze be salve and sign of the cross. Let you be blessing no one understands. Let you be words a stranger waits for. Let you be bunker you crawl into. Let you guffaw, let you cackle. Let you be last one left. Let you be last one. Let you be last, let you be. Let you, let. That's my last poem. Again, my name is Kay Ulandai Barrett. I can be found online at kbarrett.net or on any social media at brown round boy. That's B-O-I, because I'm brown, I'm round, and I'm a boy. And yes, what I think about Poets House, Poets House is a remarkable place for all kinds of poets and beautiful people to learn their ancestry in poetry and to get resources and care in beautiful sunlit windows and to basically write and archive our future. Thank you so much, Poet House, for all your time and attention, and thank you for listening, everyone. Take care. If you've enjoyed these programs, please consider giving a contribution to Poets House. For more than 30 years, they've kept the door wide open to everyone for the joy of poetry. Recently, they have temporarily had to shut the door and are reeling from the financial implications. Please give, even a small donation, if you can. Thank you.